Okay, the next point is, is it normal or abnormal field? The result displayed in the grayscale and in the numerical area. This is the grayscale, or we call it the half tone. It gives us an impression, but we shouldn't depend on it. It is something that gives impression. It is something that we can use to explain things to the patient, but we should not depend on that area at all for a very simple reason. In our test, we only check 76 points or 54 points. But to make this drawing, the computer has used 2,000 symbols. So the computer has added in between the points we've tested on his own some more points. So this is just to give an impression, but it's not something we depend on. Again, the symbol, it covers a certain range. Say this symbol is used when the sensitivity is between 26 to 30. So over the time, if you are repeating the same test for the patient time after time, the sensitivity of the area may change, but still the computer is using the same symbol. Again, different machines use different ranges for the same symbol. So we shouldn't depend on this area at all, just for the patient to, to give some explanation for the patient. Numerical values are numbers written here. This is the sensitivity of each location of the retina, and we get some useful information for us. We can discuss this later in these different subjects. Now, we come to this area. This area of the printout is known as the total deviation. So here we get the actual sensitivities of the patient. And here we get these numbers that we call the total deviation. What is that? Normally, the sensitivity of the retina varies with age. On doing the test to start the machine, we need to enter the date of birth of the patient. So we know exactly the date of birth of the patient, the age of the patient. It is known that every decade, every 10 years, the sensitivity of the retina decreases by half to one decibel. So the machine needs to compare the sensitivity of our patient with the normals of the same age. So for example, here are the numerical value of our patient. Say this point here, the patient have a sensitivity of 27. The normal age of the same age, the normal subject of the same age, the normal sensitivity of this area is 31, not 27. So you get a printout here of minus 4. So actually, the program will check the numbers of each location, the sensitivity of each location the patient recorded. Then compare this value with the normal value of the same age. If there is a difference, we start to print out the difference here. For example, this point, there is no difference with the normal. This point is less than the normal by two. This point is less by the normal by four. This point less by five. This point is higher than the normal by one. So in this part of the printout, the difference between the numbers we, you see, these are the sensitivities of the patient. When compared to the number of the normal, you don't see it's recorded somewhere in the program. The differences are put in in these locations, okay? So this is the total deviation. Then below it, you get a graphic presentation of the probability plot of these points. 
we need to understand certain points in the statistics to know the meaning of these things. This is the frequency distribution curve of height. Imagine we get a sample of 1,000 person and start to measure the height of every person of this group. Say people having a height of 100 cent 150 centimeters, their number was zero. 101, you get a number of 25 persons. Say 150, height, you get a number of 50 sexy persons. 160 centimeters, this height was found in 150, and so on. Say 170, you get it in 400 persons. 180, you get it in 150. 188, you have it in only 40, and so on. This is known as the frequency distribution curve of height. In statistics, if you have this curve, and if I give you one value, I will tell you exactly the probability of occurrence of this value in this group. Say, if you have this curve and you ask the statistics, what is the value of having the height 155? The answer will be 5%. What is the probability of having a person height 152? The answer will be 1%. What is the probability of having one five five half? The probability, say, will be half percent. Again, what is the probability of having a patient uh, height one eight eight? Answer will be five percent. One eight nine centimeters. Answer will be one percent. One eight ninety. Answer will be half percent. So this is the probability. You, you can have this curve whenever you get the whole curve or whenever you have the mean and standard deviation. If any value you get the mean and standard deviation, you have the curve and you can tell the probability of occurrence of any value in this curve. So, imagine that I told you we have a person that is his height is 152. Then I will tell you this person is short. He is not normal. He's dwarf. Okay? You can accept that. But this value, 152, occurs in the normal population in 1%. So I may be wrong by probability 1%. Again, we get a person, his height is 180. I will tell you, this is a very long person. He's abnormal. He's a megalic person. OK? You can accept that. But the value 190 occurs in the normal population in half percent. So I may be wrong, and this is not a diseased person. He's a normal person. And this value occurs in the normal by half percent. So this is the meaning of probability. Now we come to the field of vision. Each location of the 54 points, or of the 76 points, each point of these have been known the mean and standard deviation of the value of this point among the normals. Say any location, one location, get a normal value in this range, and it's been tested, say, in 1,000, 100,000 persons, and we know this location get this range of values. Now, for example, this, val this location get a sensitivity 5% of the normals have a sensitivity of 20. Now, it comes to our patient. If our patient get a sensitivity of 20, the program will sign this point and say this point is abnormal. But this value 20 occurs in the normal in 5% of the normal. So this assumption giving this point being abnormal can be wrong by chance 5% because it occurs in 5% of the normal persons. Say a sensitivity 19 occurs in 1%. The program will sign it and say this is a low sensitivity. It's abnormal. 
But this assumption can be wrong by 1% because it occurs in 1% of the normals. Say 17, half percent. The program will say this is low, this is abnormal. But this assumption of being low, being abnormal, is, can be wrong by possibility half percent. And this is the key of these 5%, 2%, 1%, or half percent. So for example, in this printout, you get all these points are black, sign being abnormal, but this assumption can be wrong by possibility half percent. This mark being abnormal, but it can be in 5% of the normal. So this is the meaning. So the total, the differences here are presented in the total deviation in numbers. And if these numbers are on the extremities of the values, then it will be lighted out, highlighted out here. And the key of these probabilities is written here. So the total deviation, we see the difference between the measure, measured threshold of each individual test location and the age-corrected normal values for that location. 